Hi everybody. Um, I'm sorry the Facebook Live cut off halfway through what I was doing, so, um, you know, you get a little angry at technology and then you problem solve and work through it and you find a solution. Uh, my name is Joanne Gambias. I am the statewide operations manager for Savvy Services for the Blind in Arizona. Savvy, um, although is not certified in structured discovery yet, uh, we teach under structured discovery uh, methodology. And because of structured discovery methodology, we are able to still teach virtually. So I'm going to uh, explain a little bit about Savvy. Um, and then what is structured discovery and then how structured discovery um, is beneficial in this virtual world that we live in currently. So Savvy um, has three centers, one in Tucson, one in Yuma, and one in Phoenix. Although I am, uh, I live in Tucson, I get to travel and visit people from all of the centers. And Savvy works with um, babies all the way to the elderly. Uh, as long as they want to come and learn independent skills, we are here to help. We have um, a, a summer program for kids that we um, co-sponsor with uh, the National Federation of the Blind. BELL stands for Braille Enrichment Literacy and Learning. So that um, is for... We have a toddler program all the way to middle school. And then we have a summer program called the Ready, Set, Go program, which um, is for high school students to help uh, improve their skills that they weren't able to focus on during uh, the school year, as well as a lot of confidence building exercises and then um, some working experience as well. And then finally, we have our um, residential program, as well as our day program, uh, which is a comprehensive services program. And that program helps people uh, get ready for work or for school. And all of our teachers teach using the structured discovery methodology. So what is structured discovery? So structured discovery was first um, applied to teaching in O&M or orientation of mobility or in layman's terms, cane travel in 1984. Um, it was trademark uh, structured discovery cane travel in 2009, but the methods and the principles uh, come from the lived experiences of blind men and women who shared their experiences and their attitudes about blindness and the techniques um, with each other through the organization of the National Federation of the Blind since 1940. So although the, the trademark term structured discovery hasn't uh, been around for too, too long, the methods and the principles have been um, around for decades. So structured discovery, although it started out in cane travel, it has been uh, expanded into all um, classes, so into independent living skills, into access technology classes, into braille class, into job readiness class. Everything that we teach and everything that we do um, all revolves around structured discovery principles. Um, structured discovery is a unique instructional service that focuses on teaching independence through a meaningful, robust, and lifelong manner. Uh, it focuses on non-visual training, uh, training skills, problem-solving strategies, experiential learning, and confidence-building experiences. Structured discovery relies heavily on Socratic questioning, which is asking a strategic questions to guide the student to solve the problem on their own. Um, and I'll explain how that works in a second. Um, there's also a pro uh, role modeling is huge in structured discovery philosophy. 
because although a student might not personally have experience um, with a certain technique by watching others role model, they're able to um, believe within themselves that they're capable of learning those skills and that it is even possible to begin with. And the most important thing about structured discovery is focusing on breaking down the misconceptions about blindness so that the blind people know truly deep within themselves that they are capable and that blind people are capable. Because until you truly believe in yourself, you'll never give yourself the opportunity to master the skills to be able to be good at it. Uh, like Henry Ford famously put it, whether uh, you believe you can or you believe you can't, you are right. So we focus on helping the students have the, the experiences of mastering uh, new skills, of watching others master those skills, so role model, uh, talk about the abilities of blind people to help persuade them uh, that they are able and give them the environment where they truly are able to build an experience and learn because without that nobody will ever want to try uh, because trying and failing is something that's scary whereas in our training trying and failing just helps you find another uh, technique or tool that you can use in the future. It might, this might not have worked now, but now it'll help you uh, later on when you come into this situation again, you'll know what not to do and what, what to do. So um, structured discovery can be described um, as a more guided way of discovery learning. So first off, what is the difference between discovery learning and guided learning? In most training centers, traditionally, guided learning is um, the method of training that is most commonly used. This is also usually the way that we are taught in school. So guided learning is when the content of what is being learned is presented by the instructor almost completely um, in final form and you're just expected to remember it so if you think about it there's a lot of times you'll take a test you'll memorize everything you need to know for the test you you answer the test you might have aced the test but if you were asked to take the test a week later you wouldn't remember any of the concepts that went over and you would probably fail the test that's what happens with guided learning if the student doesn't truly believe or truly understand the concepts they might be able to reiterate what you said what the instructor said but they can't truly um, make that concept real within their own lives with discovery learning um, specifically discovery it's a lot of trial and error and just let the student figure it out on their own and that way is a lot harder but in the end once a student learns the skill or masters the skill they'll never forget it because they had a lot of trial and error to get there structured discovery is a little bit of both there is that structure to begin with uh, but as the student builds the base they're given more opportunities to discover on their own to really truly make the experience their own. For example, um, sometimes it is more, it's easier to use guided learning and sometimes it's more beneficial to use discovery learning. So structured discovery is kind of the best of both worlds. You could um, have somebody discover um, when where the sun rises and where the sun sets you can have them wake up every morning and look outside and see where the sun is and every evening uh, go back outside and figure out where the sun is 
Or you could just tell them that the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. That is something that is consistent and never changes. And um, although they could figure it out on their own, it's not really beneficial um, to spend that time learning that. Same thing with um, cardinal directions. Um, you could have somebody um, figure out where the sun is every morning to figure out where east is. Or you could just tell them where east is so that they have a foundation that they can base them off of. Whereas if a student is learning how to use their cane and their cane hits something, uh, the instructor could say, oh, your cane just hit the wall. Or you can say, oh, what did your cane just hit? What do you think that is? Why did your cane stop? And ask probative questions so that the student has to think about it and then has to remember, how did that feel when my cane hit, hit the wall? How did it sound when it hit the wall? Does it sound differently when it hits the wall versus when it hits a window? Does it sound differently when it hits a cement wall versus a wooden wall? Uh, or does it sound differently if it hits a door? All of these things change depending on the materials, the environment that you're in, but the concept of asking those questions and figuring out what it might have been that your cane hit creates within the student uh, a problem-solving mindset so that they know that although they might not know what it is, they're able to figure it out through listening, through their auditory skills, through their tactile skill information, through um, discovering and, and experiencing different materials in different environments, they're able to grow that repertoire of understanding. However, if the instructor always tells the student what they're touching with their cane, oh, you hit a trash can, oh, you hit this, oh, you hit that, oh, that's the, uh, the curb, the student no longer has to think for themselves and they start relying on the instructor to tell them everything. And that uh, develops a codependency on the instructor, but then it also puts that belief within the student that they could never be able to travel without their instructor or without somebody else always giving them the information. Although their cane is able to give them the information as long as they take the time to process what it's telling them. So that is a little bit of like the difference between guided versus discovery versus structured discovery. So in this environment, when it's virtual, um, it actually has given even more control to the student because they are on their own and all they have is this, the instructor to ask those Socratic questioning and they can build off of the information that they have learned, the skills that they have learned, but now it's on them even more um, to have the locus of control and the self-monitoring skills. So for instance, in um, independent living skills, where you might be learning how to bake cookies, when you're in the classroom, um, in a guided environment, uh, instructors have a tendency to bring out all the equipment for the student, bring out all the ingredients, go over um, the process, double check the work of the student. And so the student doesn't truly have that feeling of independent accomplishment because they have a tendency to think that if the instructor wasn't there, they wouldn't have been able to accomplish it. In structured discovery uh, methodology, the student is learning this all on their own. They have to go find the ingredients on their own, if they don't know what it is, then they talk about how how it is. How do you figure out the difference between salt and sugar? Um, other than, you know, you might have labeled it. What if there's no label? What if it's somebody else's kitchen? Uh, all the different ways that you can figure out something. So you're not relying on the instructor or somebody else to give you confirmation, but the student is focusing on how they can figure out um, what things are so that they are able to do it independently. And then now, even more so in virtual, the staff are not there to help or to double check 
Um, so the students have to rely completely on their own abilities. The staff is still there um, either through Zoom or on the phone to talk about um, the process and to ask questions. And what do you think this is? How do you think you're going to figure it out? How do you figure out if it's done or not? Because there's nobody else there to help them but themselves. So that really gives that empowerment and that independence um, to the students. And the, right now, it's even better because not only are they uh, learning these skills, they're learning these skills at home. Um, and so they get to see that the skills that they were learning in training still apply in a new environment at home. Um, sometimes they say, oh, well, because the classroom is well kept or they have all the things that I, that's why I can succeed at home, I can't succeed. But virtually we're showing students that everything that they're learning in the classroom can be applied no matter where they are. And so um, through virtual, there's been a lot of positives. Although being in person is a lot uh, more beneficial in many ways because we can have that one-on-one -on -one, um, basic instruction, so to teach the fundamentals. Um, but because of structured discovery teaching and methodology, our students were able to adapt very quickly to this change and our staff as well. So our, although you know everything takes a second to adapt, um, because we teach problem solving and adapting to the environment and never relying on the world to adapt for you, but you adapting to the world, our students have been able to uh, really prosper in this time. And some of the things that we've been able to do because of virtual is uh, incorporate more group classes with our different sites. So we have um, a class called Positive Philosophy of Blindness, and that class talks about different aspects of blindness and the world and misconceptions about blindness and how do we deal with that and kind of the emotional um, elements that can affect us from being uh, successful. So we talk about many different subjects, um, but during this virtual world, we've been able to connect all of our students together. So students don't get to interact just with the people um, from their site location, uh, their center location, but they are able to connect with the other centers and get that extra element of connectedness. And they get to see that not only the people that they're around are going through what they're going through, but people all over the state of Arizona understand and can relate and are going through the same thing. So it's building that bond that um, some of the students didn't have before. And so now not only are they making uh, connections locally, but they are making connections statewide. So I guess the last thing I wanna say about structured discovery and virtual is that structured discovery is all about learning how to problem solve. Getting the skills is one is a big step, but it's only one step. Once you have the skills, you have to believe in the skills and you have to believe in yourself as a blind person that you are capable of anything that you set your mind to. And although the world might not understand, might have a lot of misconceptions about the abilities of blind people, our students learn that they can adapt and overcome anything that is put forth. And so I think in this day and age during the pandemic and everything changing around us, our students have been able to be resilient because they've been taught from day one that they are able to problem solve and find solutions so that they can be successful no matter what. And the world might not be ready for them, but they're ready for the world and they're ready to take on any challenge that comes their way. And so I think if for anybody and everybody out there, you can learn from structured discovery methodology and what we teach our students that 
Um, although change is inevitable and change can be hard, as long as you have uh, the right attitude, you have the skills to problem solve, um, and you have the mindset that you can do anything and you can get through anything, you can get through this and um, you'll be able to be successful in no matter anything you do in life. So with that, I will let you guys go. If you guys have any questions, please comment below um, and I will try and answer anything. Uh, I just want to say that this was a very brief understanding of structured discovery, but I hope it makes sense and that you're able to um, understand why this method is super important and why our students are so successful and why, although it might seem like we are being difficult because we're not giving the answers to our students right away, we're creating that true independence and true belief in themselves so that they can go anywhere, any place, whenever they want and succeed in whatever they want to do. So with that, um, thank you for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.